it was like um, Black Friday sales. People were, you know, hustling, bustling, and yeah. we bought these, we import these candles from America, you know, you really can't get them anywhere. And we were selling for a lot of money, and people were coming in and just putting them all in the basket, you know, four or five pounds worth of basket. Hey everybody, it's John Lamerton here alongside my good friend and business partner, Mr. Jason Brockman. We are here for another episode of the Ambitious Lifestyle Business Podcast, where as always, it is our job to help you get more customers and make more money without just working harder. So without further ado, let's dive straight into this month's episode. Hey everybody, welcome to March's podcast. I've got some good news for you to kick off. Uh, this month, and that is some good news. Oh, yes, I'm indeed. The good, news. Uh, the good news is that the doors are now open, if you're listening to this in March, uh, for the 1% Club. As you will know, if you're a regular listener to the ALB podcast, you will know that we open the doors to the 1% Club every March and every September. So if you are listening to this in September, uh, or indeed in March, when this episode comes out, then doors are open and you are welcome to join now. So have a look at bigidea.co.uk and click on the, bio, the button that says 1% Club. And you go on there, you can see and hear from other 1%ers, including today's guest, uh, talking about how the 1% Club has helped them grow their businesses and design their ideal lifestyle in a less stressful way. Now, I don't know if it is for you, but if you are open-minded about stacking up those small marginal gains to grow your business and deliver the lifestyle you want, then Find out more about the club and how it works. Again, at bigidea.co.uk and click on that 1% club button. Come on in. Come on in. Come and join us. It's it's lovely. The water's lovely and warm. Don't know why that is. Anyway, <laughs> today's guest uh, on the podcast is Chris Harris. Uh, now, Chris walked away from a £5 million a year business to create an ambitious lifestyle business that truly delivers the lifestyle he wants for himself and for his family. In today's episode, you're going to hear how Chris started his business working from home with just £300 after leaving the Marines, how he built it up to a £5 million a year empire, and why he walked away from it all. And he hasn't stopped walking since. Chris, welcome to the podcast. Good evening. Good evening, guys. Right, I like that. And I'm going to have to use that. I'm going to walk in a way. I quite like that. <laughs> I'm going to write that down. We'll get a copy of this. That'd be great. Fantastic. So, Let's. I want to go right back to the beginning if we can, Chris. Yep. Um, so you are a former Royal Marine. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Cool. The second, I believe, Royal Marine we've had. We had Mark Ormrod on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I know Mark very well. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So there's obviously a path here. You know, Royal Marines. Obviously, we are a naval city here. Yeah. Um, why did you leave the Marines? So I was in the Marines for um, about twelve years. In the end, mm-hmm. um, you know, I spent an awful lot of time away. Um, you know, probably at least half of that was was away on operations. You know, I did. Um, I did Afghanistan twice. I was in the Maldives, which actually wasn't wasn't too bad. But I was out there for a year. Um, I did Norway a few times, did America, uh, sort of Far East. You know, I went all over the place, and um, I had a really good time. Um, you know, I, I was a, a soldier. I was in the police. I was an intelligence officer as well. Right at the end, you know, I had a really really good career. Unfortunately, I broke my foot um, on operations. Um, you know, it comes with a bit of a, a stumbling block, whereby you know I couldn't run anymore. You know, and I sort of made the decision, actually, you know, I was offered a very good pension, a good payout, and, you know, it just made sense to actually, I wasn't ever going to do what I joined to do, you know, and, um, you know, from, from joining at 16, being one of the youngest, you know, Royal Marines to, to pass out to actually 12 years later, brilliant career, and actually it was never probably going to be the same again. I made the decision to knock on the head and to come out. Had you started the family by then, or was that...? Yeah, so that was another thing. I mean, I, I met Charlotte probably... So my wife six years before leaving, maybe mm. maybe a little bit more of that. She'll probably look at this and correct me. Other thought, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, certainly that. You know, half that I was away all the time. You know, I had um, two young children as well. Yeah. You know, if you took both children example, you know, when when our first one was born, Chloe, two weeks later I was out in Norway. When Jack was born, you know, I think a month later I was out in the Maldives. You know, one of them got you know injured to the hospital. I rushed back. I flew back through Bahrain on a, on a rush. And, you know, I was away all the time. And, you know, running around the desert, getting shot at, it's a young man's game, yeah. you know, and once you've got a family, it, it changes your perspectives of things a little bit. And, yeah. you know, as nice as it was, I used to go out there and, you know, for seven months, come back, you know, with a six pack of tan and a long haircut, you know, have loads <laughs> of money in my back pocket, you know, got my lash every night, nice yeah. meals. When you get your kids, it, it all changes and actually you, you, you're not a rock star anymore. You've got to settle down and, yeah. 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 So the ambitious flair kind of started there, there in the 
cool than really, I guess, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. You need a certain amount of ambition to be able to get into the Royal Marines and yeah, to, to do yeah. all the courses, to get through it. And, uh, it's really good speaking yeah, I mean, that's probably the reason why I did join the Marines. I went on a, on a weekend with, um, apologies to anyone who's watching this who is in you know, the services, you're, you're, you guys are all great. <laughs> um, yeah, I went on a weekend with the Army and it was just, it's like being with the Scouts and, you know, I went on one with the Parachute Regiment and I did really well and yeah. sort of come top recruit. I went on one with the Marines and I really struggled. Wow. You know, and I thought, right, you know, that's the one that's yeah. going for that. You know, you know, no one likes an easy ride. I say some people do, but um, no, you, you, you've got to challenge yourself yeah. and push, push the boundaries. Yeah. You can, I think yeah. I think that's probably going to be a common theme for today is pushing the boundaries and pushing yourself and challenging yeah. yourself from what yeah. obviously we know of you, of you so far. Yeah. So you decided to leave the Marines. Yeah. Did you literally just walk away and say, what am I going to do now? What was the thought process? Yeah, no, I was quite lucky because um, I probably got injured two years prior to leaving mm-hmm. so at that point we, we actually you know started buying and selling you know goods online and yep. um, and, we, and we built a business you know so when i left it was it was pretty much just at the stage it could support us oh, okay. so it's a bit of a leap of faith but um you know it, it wasn't blindly going right what do i do now yeah it was it was still it was still a risk you know but it was actually one of these get out of your comfort zone take the risk and you know, it's, it's sink or swim. Definitely. So what, what sort of things were you selling? So we started off on, um, as the thing is, when I, when I got injured, you know, I broke my foot, um, I had an operation on it, you know, I was, I was off, I couldn't do anything for six or eight weeks, I think it was, an awful long time. You know, I bought a PlayStation, flipping out, I hate PlayStations, you know, I, you know, I spent three, four hundred, whatever they cost, you know, I paid it for about a week, not even that, I didn't think, and I just, I thought, this is rubbish, you know. And uh, I started looking around the room, I couldn't really walk. I was like, Toaster. Anyone using that? No, 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 we're not using it. Right, I'm going to bang on eBay. You know, I started, you know, just, just selling this. I mean, by the time I, I, I uncluttered the house, you know, I looked in wow. the quids, you know, in, in, in there and thought, well, wow, actually, this is all right. But I got, up, got up it a little bit, yeah. you know. So um, luckily my mum, she's been in business for 30 years. She's, she's got a shop, uh, a baby shop she, she's got. Oh, okay. I sort of said to her, you know, you've got the old stock, you're not shifting. So she sent me a box down and stuff for free, yeah. which, is, which is quite good. And I sold all that. And then she sells these things called um, called grow bags, you know, little baby sort of grows. Oh, yeah, yeah. They sleep in it. And I sort of said, well, they're doing quite well. Can I have a few of those? But the problem was then, you know, after about a month, I was ringing her up every day going, get more air, get more air. And I was out selling her. And it was all right to a point that she was like, Chris, you, know, you can't do this. You know, I'm, I'm losing sales in. You're, you're, you're creaming it in. You know, you, you're working for my mom. I've got a shop and rent to pay. You, know, you can't be doing this. So um, I think we, we had about three hundred pounds in a savings account. So we, we went up to the NEC up to a trade show. Mm-hmm. I waited ages to do it, but the you know, the, the big gift fairs, you know, they're, they're massive. They're sort of twenty miles of aisles up and down, yeah. up and down. You know, and I, I went there with my three hundred pounds and thought, right, you know, let's invest it. Let's see what happens. You know, the first person I went up to was there was a puzzle the stand, you know, oh, a yeah. jigsaw puzzle. I had a chat with him and said, you know, we're looking at selling online. And he shot me down. He said, <laughs> I'm not. You can't sell it online. That will devalue it. And, Online oh, wow. at the time was really found. What, no what, what time it. was this? Um, uh, probably 2013, maybe. Oh, wow. Something like that. Wow. See, I'd, I'd have said, you know, if you'd said to me that was 10 years earlier, but like, yeah, there was yeah, a no, perception was, that internet equals cheap, yeah. wasn't it? But I don't think 2013. Charlotte was... and I come went away with our heads down. Wow. And I, flipped and I was that close. <laughs> this is going, actually, this is done. I'm not doing this. You know, this, is rubbish. Yeah, yeah. this bloke was horrible. And went to the next guy, and he was all right. And yeah, just went around and I just had a chat with people. And, um, you know, we've got a few suppliers on board and, and started yeah. doing really well. You know, um, the, the biggest one was, was candles, yeah. you know, and we took a bit of a pump, we rung them up and yeah, it took ages to open the account, you know. it's uh, yeah. I, I don't mind telling now because I'm not with them, but, <laughs> you know, they, they made us put a business plan together and I was like, what is this? I forged it all. They said, we've got a business premises, a warehouse. So I went down the local self-storage place and took a few pictures. You know, I phoned them up and said, do you mind if I come review a unit? You know, yeah. I took a few pictures, and I didn't get the unit. Um, <laughs> you know, I borrowed my, my father-in-law's uh, unit in the end for a meeting. You know, I cleared all his desks out and put a few gifty things in. And, yeah. You know, just just facade that I had this big gift bag company. Brilliant. And um, yeah, lucky got the account. They rung me up and said, oh, you want to put a one and a half thousand pound order? And you don't the order. I went, oh my God. <laughs> I did it. Yeah, but yeah. We, we sold it instantly you wow. know and, and within you know a few weeks we had the whole the whole range you know we just we just went gun home and went right let's you know, let's, let's do it let's go for it luckily it paid off you know within you know um you know a few i think within a year we were spending about two million pounds them you wow. know for, for one one supplier mm-hmm. you know we did, we did really well and um, was that just online at that point or did you have um, so initially it was just online so we so i mean we started from home 
you know, we had a little, um, had a little cupboard in my lad's room. Yeah. And then we, we outgrew that, so we went up in the loft. I think that's probably the thing in between. And then we went to a little garage lock up. Then we had a, what, a unit, and we had our own unit. And then yeah. we had a unit in a shop. And then we got another shop. And that was all over a space of, I don't know, probably two and a half years or something, maybe. Wow. We did it quite quickly. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, we, we got massive bonuses from the company as well. You were spending that much money. You know, they were they were showing it back. And actually, the, the money we were getting back from them, rather than going away on a holiday, you know, and um, living up, we had to go, right, let's open the shop up. You know, there's enough money there for stock and rent. You yeah. know, let's, let's go for it. So that's, that's what we did. As a result, a result of that, I didn't have a holiday for about six years and I had big bags under my eyes. But <laughs> well, you've um, had a year in the Maldives just before that, so you know we can't complain too yeah, much. Yeah, you know, but you know, I mean, we worked really hard initially. Um, they were lasted in the Marines as, as a prime example. You look at Christmas time. Um, you know, I was working in the Marines from you know nine to five. I, was, I didn't have a car, so I was cycling yeah. to work to, to send us which was five mile both ways, ten mile a day. You know, I was getting all these orders were, were going in. I used to have my, my iPhone, and it used to make a kajing noise every time you sold it. And I'd be in work just typing away, you know, and it, it, it keep making this sound. I was like, oh, God, Jesus, I was getting a bit worried. Wow. But I was going in the warehouse for probably, um, you know, like um, four o'clock in the morning, you know, start packaging the orders. I'd then go back there till 11 o'clock at night you know, over Christmas and these orders would just keep coming in, you know, and we'd find all these Avid calendars in there going back out. We were selling for, you know, we're the only ones to have these. We were selling these calendars that should have been 20 people. We are selling for 60 for the pop, you know, wow. we're the only people who had them. Yeah. You know, and I couldn't let all that go. But in the end, you know, four, four hours sleep a night, I yeah. just got really ill. My body just gave up. And that was a decision, actually, I was offered the, you know, the, the, the come out of the Marines, you know, and it's like, I can't keep doing both. I wasn't doing both very well, admittedly. Yeah. So yeah, we went to the business room. I'm not surprised now. I mean, you said about um, you know tan, six pack, long hair. With it, five miles bike ride there to <laughs> right. work. Yeah, yeah. Days lumping stuff around in the Marines, <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. you're back in the warehouse packing orders. It's no wonder. You, yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah, pack, yeah, 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 yeah. But now you know it's. I remember being in the warehouse. It's a real cold place, no heating. Yeah. Big shutter door being there before Christmas you know it's 3 o'clock in the morning it was a blooming lonely place <laughs> but you know I had the, the pressure of all the orders building yeah. up I used to go in there some days and just see a stack of invoices like that you go how on earth am I going to get through all this yeah. you know it's um, yeah so we, we we whizzed through the journey just now but let's just yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah and kind of go bit, you know because how do because there will be people listening to this going okay well I've got the idea I'm maybe in my yeah. bedroom now mm. I'm doing a bit of eBay trade I'm doing some mm. FBA on Amazon yeah um, I'd like the two million pound a year business whoa slow down how do I get there mm. <laughs> from where I am now and it's kind of well how did yeah. we go from yeah I, I can understand obviously we've you've touched on it a little bit with the yeah, we didn't have a holiday mm. we reinvested everything um, so perhaps that's how we go from yeah, three hundred pound. Mm. Get your first orders in in the bedroom. How do we go from there to the loft? From the loft yeah. to the lock up, yeah. from the lock up to the the unit. How you know where where are those steps come and how do you know mm. when you're ready to go onto that next level? Yeah, I think I think the biggest thing initially is what what I liked is we never we never jumped too far above what we couldn't afford. Mm -hmm. So we only ever purchase something or, or invested in a, in a shop or, you know, actual retail space once we could afford it. Mm -hmm. That was from a bonus. So that's from excess sales. You know, we did things gradually, but we did things gradually that were educated. I think that's the biggest thing, ed educated guesses. In this day and age, no one should really be, in my opinion, no one should really be buying stock that they don't know they can sell. Yeah. Um, if you look at, I say my mum, I don't know if she's going to watch this, um, but I, I see her at the trade fair, you know, she's done it for 30 years, you know, she's great with suppliers, she gets some really good deals, she's really yeah. cheeky, I'll oh, bring me a Prosecco and she'll sit there, you know, and it's, 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 it's fine. But, um, you know, she'll, I sort of said, well, what have you bought today then? And she, oh, I bought some cups, I bought some sauces, I bought some uh, random statues. I was like, okay, that's great. Check you sell them? Oh, I don't know yet. We'll, we'll find out in the next week. And for me, <laughs> that's um, you know that's dead money. I used to go to I used to trawl these um, these trade fairs. I, I talk about twenty miles of aisles. And generally, yeah. when I went to these fairs, I went there to perform. And I used to come back with stacks and stacks of uh, catalogues, you know. And I used to go through and, and just find something that I liked. Actually, thought that that's a really good product. Mm. I used to go on eBay. Or how many have they sold? Yeah, you know, can I can I beat the price? You know. Is there a margin in it? You know, there's loads of sort of factors. I mean, the software you can buy that, that we had, you know, that you can put in uh, barcodes. I mean, anything that gets this on eBay, eBay is really good. Yeah. Anything that gets this on eBay has to have a barcode. Um, 
you know, and, and you can find it. You can find how many sellers there are. As long as you, you spoke to spies, you find out the, the wholesale cost of it. You can work out there's a margin in there. Well, can you beat that price? Can you? There is, the yeah. Experience. I mean, that educated guess yeah. rather than just actually oh, yeah. a bit of gut feeling. I quite like that. No, that's a yeah. lovely mug you've got there. I think I could sell a few white mugs. Yeah, exactly. I'll buy, yeah. A, I'll buy a box of those yeah. and we'll see what we can do. But I mean, what we're doing with the data on it is it makes my life a lot easier. Yeah, I mean, we're doing a mass right at the end. We're, we're getting suppliers whole catalogues of yeah you know, anywhere from five hundred twenty thousand products and, and just put it on an Excel or to put it through our system, and it would just give you. Every, you know, there's five sellers, you know, there's 20% margin there. As long as you can sell it, well, they've sold 400 in the last three days. Mm -hmm. It's, you should be able to pick out these, these prize products that should sell. That's a theory. That's a theory. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't always work. No, but yeah, as you say, it's better than going, yeah. well, I like this product. Yeah. If I like this product, then there must be other people that like this yeah. product. It's that whole... There's so many different factors in it. You know, as a prime example, we had this one little gift set that over Christmas, it had five candles in, you know, 7 9 brilliant little purchase, uh, impulse purchase. You know, one year we sold 32,000 of them. You know, we had three people over Christmas just to package them up. And that's all, yeah. they, that's all they did, you know. It was brilliant. Next year, I think we bought... 20,000, you know, over, sort of staggered it over. Yeah. And we thought, oh, you know, easy seven. I think we sold like 16,000. We were left with, we left oh, with loads wow. of them. And you don't know why. You don't know if, you know, if Christmas is delayed in terms of weather, or actually it was a bit warmer, you know, is um, you know, Brexit, people got no money, are they worried about purchasing? There's so many different factors in I guess competition came into it as well. Competition was a big the, one. The supply that you kind of had, was, that they were the first, they were the biggest, they were the ones which everybody kind of wanted. They were yeah. the brand that everybody would know yeah. in that field. But then I guess after a bit of, a short period of time, there were lots of copies and yeah. cheaper alternatives, and actually you could pop into Primark yeah. and pick up the same <laughs> yeah. kind of thing yeah. that, that, that that particular company was doing. I mean, this is one of the things that you know we, we did jump in at the right time. You, know, you talk about that needle in the haystack, and I think we're probably looking back now, we probably did find it initially. Yeah. Um, you know, you talk about these advent calendars, sixty quid a pot. Well, actually, everyone yeah. the next year who was watching me selling at sixty quid a pot thought, right, I better get a few more of them. So obviously, as the years go on, yeah, you know, it goes down and down and down. And, you know, by the end, I think we probably talk about it in a minute, but we were scraping around trying to sell these oven calendars. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah. Well, this is another thing. You've got, you've got to struggle with the iron's hot, though. You know, if you, if you see something that yeah. is working, you know, in my opinion, you, you've got to go for it. Yeah. I, I'd, um, <laughs> you've got to take that opportunity and seize that opportunity. And sometimes you've got to know when the time is right to go all in and to go heavy with it. So I, yeah. I was um, writing an email for one of our one centres today about, um, Google Ads, mm. and I talked about kind of my experience of Google Ads when they first started in the UK back in 2002, and I was buying traffic for like, what well, was one cent a click, so about half a pence yeah. per click, and I was earning 15 pence per click, so mm. brilliant, I was earning 30 times my money, mm. but I was playing small time, yeah. and I was chucking a few hundred quid at it, um, friend of mine, very similar size business to us at that time, started doing exactly the same thing. He was buying traffic. He was doing more financial keywords, credit cards, personal loans, mortgages. Uh, so he was paying maybe 30 pence a click, 40 pence a click. But then he was earning five, six, seven, eight pounds a click mm. on the back end. Yeah. Uh, he obviously, same as me, ran out of money because there's only so much money you can spend. Mm. So he maxed out his credit card, which not a great idea on a whim, but ultimately he'd proven the business model. So he maxed out his credit card then when he maxed out his credit card, he went to the bank manager and said, I want to borrow, I think it was 20 grand. He said, I want to borrow 20,000 uh, pounds. He was age 22, 23. And he said, I want to borrow 20 grand. Bank manager went, oh, don't know about this. So well, look, I've, I've got this um, business. Um, here's, you know, here's this process. I'm spending X amount. Uh, here's my earning statement. You can see what the income statement is. They're all coming in from these big blue chip affiliate companies. Oh, yeah. oh, okay then. You know, as long as you personally guarantee the loan, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, all right, personally guaranteed loan. He gave them, the bank manager gave him the 20 grand. Six months later, uh, he went back to the bank manager and said, there's your 20 grand back plus your interest. Um, and the bank manager went, <laughs> how have you got that money back? So, well, I put that 20 grand to work. And I've now turned it into two hundred and fifty thousand pounds. Yeah. So I don't need your money anymore. <laughs> At which point, the bank manager, who obviously will only ever offer you an umbrella when it's raining, suddenly yeah. went, "Would you like some more money? Because I can arrange another loan for you." And went, "Oh, well, how much can you give me?" He went, "Well, I could probably sign off on one hundred and fifty thousand." And this guy went, "Well, okay then. I've got this money making machine where I yeah. put money in the top, and thirty times the money drops out the bottom a couple of months later." 
happy days. So I thought at the time, oh, that's that's a nice story. Thought no more of it. A couple of years later, I'm sat at this very kitchen table, flicking through my Sunday um, mm-hmm. newspaper. Sunday Times rich list, and all of a sudden, I see this oh, no. yeah. <laughs> 18 million pounds net worth, age 24. Yes. Uh, yeah. And he had the same opportunities I had, exactly the same. And I knew the wonderful money making potential of this brand new system. But this guy went all in and he went, mm. Do you know what? This is a potential here to make a huge sum of money. And he made a huge sum in a very short period of time because obviously mm. the margins soon got squeezed. Yeah. I was soon not paying half a cent a click or half a pence per click. I was soon paying 10 pence a click mm. to make 15 pence, which is still bloody good. Um, but, you know, it's that ROI did slow a little bit. But mm. for that moment, I could have put all my chips on the table mm. and gone all in. Yeah. It's, I think um, it's really important. The spot in that opportunity, and that's, that's a good thing, I think, you know, with, with you and the candles. Mm. Um, my first foray into business was mobile phones. And um, down this area, the, poor, the coverage was rather poor at the, back in 97 when, when we kind of did that. But the one network that was kind of taken off and actually was covering this area was Orange. So we kind of built this mm. Orange Warehouse. Right? I think that's what, that's what it's called. And uh, yeah, lots of uh, mobile phone shops throughout South West, but because mm. only Orange could actually cover mm. um, this area. And there weren't all the yeah. the vast number of mobile phone shops that are on yeah. now yeah. and very little competition so it was kind of mm. yeah, making hey but for two or three years it was really good and then mm. obviously everybody else kind of crossed and on and, yeah. Yeah. and then kind of blew us out of the water a little bit then. but mm. uh, yeah that's, it is about finding that right product at that right time and, and doing something with it which is, which yeah. is real yeah. and I think also knowing when to pull the plug so mm. going towards the end of your time in, in retail there now mm. you took it up to five million pounds in one calendar year yeah, that's one, a one calendar huge year. Huge business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what was that like? Was that? It was. Um, no. You know, I certainly <laughs> wasn't, wasn't sitting on the beach with yeah. my feet up drinking a you know, pina colada. You know, yeah. it wasn't quite like that. It was. Uh, it was stressful. You know, really. I mean, we had a we had a business coaching to to help us out. Um, you know, who who did wonders? You know, mm. he saved us an awful lot of money. There's an awful lot of leakage. And the problem is, you know, we go from you know three hundred to to that that five million figure. You know, we didn't have time to put systems in place. We had no handbooks, we had no manuals. Um, you know, we had a few staff members who were, you know, run ragged, you know, it was it was hard work. We had I remember one time over Christmas, you know, we had all these these big, you know, orders, all all these orders come in. We were running around picking things in boxes, you know, just off the shelf and taking it back in. Yeah. You know, a year later we had trolleys, which is quite good at the same oh, time. Yeah. But you know, it's just it's putting these systems in place to cope with it. Yeah. And we didn't do that quick enough. We, you know, I was sales, 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 you know, and just, we did a great job at that. Yeah. But we just, you know, the warehouse, I remember, you know, one time, one day, Black Friday, yeah. we had eight and a half thousand orders coming. I think it's something stupid like 70 grand of sales or something, not including the shops as well. Yeah. And we had, we had these big raw mail cages, probably about as wide as this table, but maybe that high. We had about 60 of them stacked up with, with boxes. <laughs> these boxes are all big, only, you know, little boxes yeah. and stacked up with them. You know, all these orders were sat there from Black Friday. The Royal Mail used to bring these these big lorries into us. You know, we used to push them all on. Even they were complaining we had too many. I was like, guys, you know, <laughs> I spent 600,000 of you this year and you're moaning that I'm doing too much post, but you put your finger out and get, get some more lorries here. You know, it's, um, yeah, it's crazy. But um, it was enjoyable though as well. Yeah. You know, I think that's one, one area I was good at was... Was, was being on, on the ground and motivating and organising. I think that's where I, I did. Organising the troops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, you know. And it's um, it was always a hard thing, you know. We used to, at Christmas time, we used to basically just, just pull people off the street. And in one case, our first employer, I did literally pull them off the street. I went yeah. out of the warehouse and just went, ah, who wants a job? <laughs> and there was literally someone there who we got in. And he, um, he was the, actually um, the, the son of the... the um, uh, a lady who owns the warehouse we were renting actually yeah, yeah. employed in and he came in pack of these boxes but we were literally pulling people off the street and you know we had all these um you know ex-drug offenders and alcohol yeah. and you know they were coming in and oh, 10 o'clock they're like Chris we've got to go and it's like where, where are you going oh, we've got, we got to sign on we've got to get our um, <laughs> job seekers allowance <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I said right guys off you pop you've got to get back here an hour so they used to run off and put their money and they used to come back and lose them. <laughs> But yeah, they were. Yeah, some That's where the confessions are all coming out today, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> actually a way of saving some money because I think, as you said, it's kind of like easy when you get caught up in, yeah. the, in the doing, then all yeah. of these things about saving money and all that yeah. sort of stuff. And, um, the good thing is, things, you know, I spoke earlier about the, the sort of the 32,000 know, um, gift sets we sold, you know, but it was literally just 
put it in a bit of a wrap, put it in a box, put the label on and send it out. You yeah. know, it was so easy. I could train someone to do that in five minutes. Yeah. And that's them for the next three months, you know, pretty much a day in, day out. They know that every hour they've got to do this. And yeah. you know, even, even with that, though, we, we set up a competition. I said, right, guys, whoever can package the most in an hour, I'll give you 50 quid. Yeah. Funny enough, it was actually me who did the most. I was, I was quite, a, <laughs> quite a quick packager. But actually, the next person now had to give them the 50 quid. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I... Um, Didn't often double or quits then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, was, yeah, we had about 20 people do this challenge. And I had all these people whose productivity went up 50%. Yeah. There's all these extra things packaged. We used to have these um, these trial nights for new new staff members to come in. These were the best thing ever because, you know, we sold so many of these. We used to pre-package them. Yeah. So I used to get 20 people. I used to message on Facebook and say, right, guys, who wants a job? Get 20 people in. I say, right, the, the five top packers who package the most in half an hour, you can have a job. And all these people were beavering away. I said, didn't, didn't, didn't pay for it. These are packing packages. I used to have a few hundreds, you know, made up just from doing that trial. Mm-hmm. Also, the five quicker, they would jump to the next day. You know, he's brilliant. We did this every year. We had, we had thousands of things. I said, you know, I told someone about it. I said, if you could go around the country just holding all these, these packaging trials, you'd probably, probably package up the whole, yeah, the whole lot without actually even paying for it. You know, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't, wouldn't, you know, we condone that, but. You know, just a just a joking. It was just came around there. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting yeah. how you've used. You've got a lot of resourcefulness there, mm. which I think comes from probably the bootstrapping and starting mm. with three hundred pound. And this has got to work because yeah. I'm going all in with my three hundred pounds yeah. here. Yeah. I'm taking a punt on one thing. Um, I have. I can't afford, you know, huge fancy offices and mm. a team of staff at, from the very start. So actually, yeah. you know, if people have gone out and perhaps got investment and they've got a big big sum of money or mum and dad are funding them or they've mm. you know, done a big refinance or whatever, or they've yeah. got redundancy money, then often because you've got the money, yeah. you don't have the resourcefulness that you do yeah, when exactly. you're bootstrapping. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, I'd solely agree with that. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, it's a skill that I think you can only learn mm. on the ground. Yeah. I think you can't read a book yeah. on theory I mean, about used, bootstrapping. No, I mean, we used to do hours and hours of research, you know, before we spent that money because actually that's all we had. Yeah. I used to do just ridiculous amounts of, you know, I remember waking up one morning and just, you know, it's one o'clock in the morning and just having an idea and just going downstairs and just, just yeah. researching it, you know, and it's just, until I, I did it, I couldn't get it out of my head, I couldn't go back to sleep, yeah. you know, it's just, um, it's almost boring on obsessive, I think, yeah. to a degree, you know, I, I, I still I still like it now, I've got an idea in my head, yeah. if it's, it's, you know, something related, like, um, I remember one day, I was in the, the summer about eight o'clock at night and I just thought, right, let's build a pond. So I just started digging and I was digging for hours and hours. I fucking dug this massive, massive hole. I ordered a liner and filled it up the next day. I had that for about six months. I was like, actually, it's the bigger one. You know, I just, you know, it's, it's that sort of assessiveness. If I get yeah. an idea, I, I do generally try and run, run with it. Yeah. And just, just do it. it doesn't matter really what the time is or anything. You know, we just, just get it done. Yeah. That's almost the entrepreneur's curse, isn't it? Have an idea, do it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm guessing you woke up one o'clock in the morning, one cold sweats, and went, oh, this is just too. Oh, much. I don't want to be packing candles and I don't want to be doing this. I don't want all these now. I don't want the hassle that's kind of going with that. What am I going to do? Um, yeah, to a point. You know, it's, you know, at the start of it, it was really exciting. I've always been really honest and said, you know, once I see that, what's in that financial mm. graph line going up, you know, and it platters out, I might get a little bit, you know, fed up with it. But it, it's hard work. You know, we had two retail stores at times. We had 20, 30 staff knocking about. The amount of issues we had with staff, you know, I'd, we had a HR lady and retaining just to manage them because we had that many problems. Yeah. You know, we had people's you know, just not turning up, forgetting the shop keys. And it was really hard work. And ultimately, the buck flies on you. You know, I remember being on, you know, the one weekend, I think we went away, you know, all sorts of issues happened. I remember being on the phone the whole time, being stressed out. And um, yeah, I sort of, you know, wanted just to get away from that, I suppose, really. You know, we had you know, the suppliers you know, messing us around as well. And, yeah. You know, the whole thing of issues, you know, we're in partnership with another company, you were, you were playing silly uh, monkeys, silly monkeys, <laughs> they're, they're dead. you know, and it's, um, it, it, all, it all just built up and we found actually, you know, that, you know, sales started drying up, you know, everyone sort of saw us doing quite well, sort of jump on the bandwagon. Yeah. You know, Amazon started stocking the, the product that we had, you know, our sales went from, with, 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 with the, the candle supply, we were spending two million a year with them, I think the next year we spent two hundred fifty thousand. The year after that, wow, I mean, that is I, literally decimated. But the year after that, I refused to spend anything. Yeah. You know, I just went them up and just complained all the time and sent stock back. And yeah. you know, it's just and it become really fractious. Mm. I just found myself rather than having been in the mindset of 
expand how we're going to do that mm -hmm. but actually just retract and it become a bit of a downward spiral. i think once you start and stop investing yeah and have these new ideas and you start going where can i stop leakages where can i save money you almost go the adverse way and it's you know you just become really unproductive mm -hmm. yeah i used to have a mentor who said there's no such thing as the status quo you are mm. either growing or you're shrinking yeah and you're doing one or the other yeah and i think if you're shrinking for a prolonged period of time, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. Because you can you can always make cutbacks. And there's, mm. I actually love going into businesses and making them leaner, mm. more efficient, cutting out the waste. Yeah. But you can only cut so far. You can't keep cutting. It's cutting the right things as well. Yeah. It's not it's not cutting the you know the you know the top lines, your top selling lines, your yeah. top twenty percent. You've got to keep buying them. Yeah. You know, once when the point goes, actually, I'm not going to buy them to save a bit of money. It's a, it's a really really bad idea. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I remember the coaching session that we had for One Percent Club. He came into the coaching session, and mm. I think it was something along the lines of, "I just want to give up and walk dogs on the beach." <laughs> yeah. And so we spent about half an hour, I guess, in the coaching session, talking through that. I just want to walk dogs yeah, on the beach. Yeah. You know, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a jokey thing, wasn't it? Was a bit you of a know, I... I know by your part, wasn't it? But, yeah. Yeah. I think for us to begin with, it was a real left field. Whoa, where has this come from? Because <laughs> you know, we again we were seeing the headlines: yeah. five million pounds sale. Yeah. You know, opening new stores. It's, this is going great and yeah. all of a sudden you're just like I'm hating this and I just mm. I want to walk dogs on the beach and I think yeah we, yeah. we started off very much whoa we, you know, what's going on are you okay mate and I think by the end of the meeting we were like well why don't you know mm. is, that, I mean, is that your recollection of it? Pretty much I remember yeah just sort of jokingly about it but it wasn't a, it wasn't a reality in my head I suppose you know and it's you know by the, by the end of it you know we had these shops and you know, we, we had loads of premises. We had another warehouse as well. You know, it's going back to those advocates. We had 10,000 advocates yeah. to sell on the 1st of December. And things a little bit now. You know, we might have sold 20,000, but actually being left of those, you've got the cost of those until ultimately next Christmas. You know, yeah. all these all these money stacking up. We're spending half a million pounds on Christmas stock, think, hoping that you can sell it. Yeah. But now if you don't sell it, you've you got to wait till next Christmas. You know, there's a lot of big, big bits of pressure. And by the end of it, I just... I just thought I don't need this. You know, we, we entered into another product with, a, with another company. You know, um, and it was a great idea. You know, we won prizes for it. We won ten thousand pound awards for it. You know, it was it was the next Amazon of Plymouth. You yeah. know, and I just put all my energy into it. Invested, invested, invested a tremendous amount of money. You know, and by the end of it, you know, I had all this stock on the on the shelves. You know, the other company weren't helping as much as I probably wanted them to. You know, they'll probably say the same about me. Um, but once again, it's, it's just become a very fractious relationship. Yeah. I had all the stock to push and, you know, I couldn't do it on my own. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was a, yeah, a bit of a wake up to actually, do I really want this? Do I really need this? Yeah. Is this probably more than that? Is this the industry for me? You know, okay. online is, is pretty cutthroat. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, um, you might be doing good, good one day, but actually, you know, Amazon see you doing really well and go, well, actually, oh, I better buy these. And they'll, yeah. they'll put themselves in the buy box, you know, and you know, swing thing there, you know, swing things their way. Yeah, you know, it's um, yeah, it's yeah. so many people do well with like FBA and they're, yeah. they're you know, selling well on Amazon and then yeah. that lasts for six months mm. and then all of a sudden we find, oh, Amazon have figured out what sells well. Yeah, that, that almost cuts them off, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so the internet then that's a bit cutthroat, but what's the high street like? Because I know you had two kind of high speed schools. We did, things. you know, and um. I mean, we, we were very lucky in this year. So the first store we opened was actually on the side of our warehouse. You know, we um. I can't remember how square foot it was. We had about an 8,000 square foot unit. And people always say, you know, no matter how big your warehouse is, you always fit it. And that actually was the case. You know, we walked in there first and went, oh, God, this is going to take a lot of stock. And actually, we, we did that in, a, in about a year. Yeah. We had this space literally to, to the right of, of the shop. And I just walked in, had these lovely, I say lovely, it wasn't, it was an industrial site, but actually it was, it was all right. We had these big windows. It was a lovely, lovely space in there, you know, a good few hundred square foot. And it was just prime to be, you know, a, a, a posh trade counter, I'd, I'd call it really. You know, and, and the first day we opened it, I could not believe it. We, we, we set up a, a Facebook event. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I always take these things with a bit of a pinch of salt. We had like a few hundred people you know, going. And that, this is the time before, I think. You know, when you say going, on. this is tagged as going, going. on Facebook. But this yeah. is before they, they introduced the interested button. Right. So it's not like going, we're not going. So yeah. all these people go, 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 go. And I went, oh, we're going to win. Yeah. went in to open the doors you know I think we opened at 10, 11 o'clock or something I went in there 
don't know, like eight o'clock or something. So in my head, I was like, oh, I better get the, the online orders done first because, you know, I'll, you know get, get them out of the way. I went there, you know, a few hours early and there was a massive queue. I just think, guys, you know, you have the candle shop opening. Yeah, 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 yeah. We thought we better get early to you know, get the front. <laughs> Hammering it down with rain. These people were waiting there. So I felt really bad. So I went up the cafe and bought them all a coffee. Yeah, yeah. So I, I come back down and gave them that. I said, you know, guys, you're a bit of a long way. I can't leave you in now. Anyway, I went in and started packing the orders, you know, just la, 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 in the own little world. Looks on the CCTV and the, this queue is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> and in the end, by the time we opened, it stretched from the door yeah. all the way out, probably about 50 yards through the car park. It turned left. It went all the way up to this roundabout that was about another 100 yards <laughs> out. And this queue, but then people come in the store and it was, um, it was like a sort of um, rectangle. Yeah. And they went all the way around the store to the till. Oh, so so as, they, as they were going around, they were putting stuff in their basket. The first few, it was like doing Black Friday sales. People were, you know, hustling, bustling. And yeah. we bought these, we imported these candles from America. You know, you really can't get them anywhere. And we were selling them for a lot of money. And people were coming in and just putting them all in the basket. You know, four or five hundred pounds worth of basket. And it was mental, you know. But this queue was four hours long, you know, from wow. start to finish. And people were, were queuing up. Nice. So that, that was a success. That yeah. was really good. Then we opened Exeter up. Yeah. You know, we, um, we had a fantastic year of the supplier. Got a really big bonus. So we thought, right, rather than, you know, squandering it, we'll, we'll open a new store. You know, it's was, it was an awful lot of money. It was enough to potentially buy a house. You know, wow. It was a tremendous amount of money. Um, so we, we went right in the centre of Exeter, you know, not on the high street. I think yeah. there's one independent on the high street there but we were literally just off it in a, in a lovely little square there was, there was some great stores you know behind marks and spencers next to animal it was really good prime location opened the store up there and i thought right we're gonna get some big keys in we had an awful lot of stuff i had loads and loads upstairs in the, in the stock room and you know we had about 20 pallets covered to lift all the stuff upstairs we before we just <laughs> were in the warehouse and we had it, had it there but you know hustle and bustle all upstairs it's hard yeah. hot work opened the store up and i looked out and there was Hughes, there's probably a few hundred people there, but it wasn't quite what I envisioned. You know, yeah. I just thought Exeter, you know, a lot of money up in Exeter. You know, we have some, have some real hardcore candle fans that'll be here. You know, it was a good day, but I just, my heart sank a little bit and it mm. just wasn't quite the same. And I think Exeter is quite a hard market to crack. Mm. You know, we did exactly the same, you know, advertising, marketing. Um, the store was pristine inside, you know, mm. branded, you know, branded really, really well. You know, all the shop lit girls in there, you know, just immaculately. It was almost like a high end boutique sort of thing, you know. Mm. It was, um, and it really was all about the appearance and, and this sort of stuff. We had really good media coverage. We had the, the papers turn up. The papers actually turned up. We didn't pay them. They turned up about four days in a row and took those films. And there was really bad press going, oh, how much are, you know, this company paying them? The car was like, guys, oh, <laughs> I haven't paid them anything. Yeah, so, um, yeah, but the, the high street, it's, um, it's the biggest challenge, you think, if you've done some work with the FSB, isn't it? Yeah, you know, I mean, rates and rents up there, I think we are paying 60 grand a year just to be up there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a lot lot of stuff you've got to sell. It 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 is, you've got the staff on top of that. The problem is, you know, with with Plymouth there, my office is upstairs, I'm there all the time, you can sort of monitor Mm -hmm. things. With this, you know, I wasn't there, I went up there once a week for a meeting. You know, our, our first store manager, we found her pinching stock. I could go up there and fire her and find a replacement pretty sharpish. The replacement, you know, I think she was off for a period of time, sick, and just, just went a bit off the rails. The next one we got in was really, really motivated, yeah, yeah. but the sales weren't quite there, so she was almost too qualified. Mm-hmm. I think she, she came over from Belgium. She, she worked in a real high-end you know, fashion shop and you know, sold you know, a lot of stuff in there. So, so from that to coming to where we were, she was, yeah. you know, got a bit bored. So... Um, it's hard though, you know, high street, it's hard to get people in off the street. Mm-hmm. You know, Christmas, you know, we, we made mega bucks. The rest of the year, you know, it's hard work. And candles, you know, in the summer, no matter how many fruity or how many exotic fragrances <laughs> they, they, they come out with. Well, actually, <laughs> do you really, yeah, summer yeah. breeze was one, or sea breeze, I don't know. But how many candles you really want to light in there? Yeah. You know, maybe a citronella one to keep the flies away, but actually that's not the market we were, <laughs> we were no. going for, so... So um, Harris House it came out of uh, came out of the ashes, shall we say, <laughs> from, the, from the burning candles. I yeah, yeah. that was a good way of putting it. Yeah, yeah, another plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll try to keep the thing in. So Harris yeah. House was born. That's uh, yeah. so. How how did that kind of start off? How what was your um, your concerns? Charlotte was obviously on board of her. Yeah, day. I mean, we had, we had to do that quick. I mean, we basically we come to the end of the leases for the for the shops. You know, it's um, so we shut the extra one down. You know, pulled all the stock back. Mm-hmm. Did a big, big clearance sale, you know, and um, 
you know, we, we went from having, obviously, shut them down, so sort of selling stuff off, having not really an income, yeah. to actually go and write, let's do this. So I had to do it pretty sharpish. You know, luckily, obviously, for, the, for you know, selling the candles and bits and bobs, we, the last five years, I've, I've been internet marketing, and, you know, that was our bread and butter, really. Yeah. So, um, you know, moving that energy into getting clients on board. And, and I, I always sort of say to people, you know, from my 12 years in the Royal Marines of being active and actually then five years in business, combining both of those to offer a, an active service that is well-structured, well-priced, good service, you know, that that's what people want. And I think when I went there and, and pitched it, you know, I sort of had a, a bit of a spiel, you know, to sort of say all the all the key points, all the, the wow words, I suppose you could call them, you yeah. know, it's, it's a no-brainer. And obviously finding out what, what the customer's issue was, if it was actually what nine to five, they want someone to come in, if they can't walk the dog themselves, if they don't like going out in the rain, you know, I could just come along and say, well, I'll take the dog out in the rain, you know, I'll, I'll get her at 12 o'clock, I'll, I'll put the three mile in, you know, that's that's what people want to hear and just, it's just saying it in the right way. It's yeah. just, uh, we found it very easy, I think we, I, I found it very easy to get clients on board and we did that pretty quick. Um, but yeah, you know, we just got off it, you know, I'd, but initially, we probably didn't make a lot of money, you know, from it. I used to get, drive across town just to pick up one dog and yeah. take it for an hour walk, and you think well, it's not really worth it. But look at the investment. Actually, so having learned time. from the previous business, you're now whilst mm. at a small, manageable level, putting your systems and processes in place so that we're not driving across town yeah. to pick up one dog. We're yeah. actually optimizing things. Yeah, and that, that's, that's, that's something we've done. You know, and I was talking to my wife Charlotte the weekend. You know, she was very keen. So actually, we're in a good position at the minute because. Mm. You know, we've we've got a business that, that can support us you know, quite nicely. We're still you know, pretty comfortable, um, but we're not manic manic at the minute. We've got times to put stops in place, systems in yeah. place, and actually just just a bit more structure, which is good. So rather than going from three hundred pounds to the five million, running around packing, you know, putting things in boxes and taking them yeah. in, and, and just being really disconnected, we we've got the time now, and we always felt you know a runaway, a bit of a runaway business. The sales are coming in more and more than yeah. we can manage. We're all playing catch up. With this, it's um, it's a little bit different. You know, we can go at our own speed. Yeah. We can turn the advertising button on or off. You know, and it's um, it's a lot more controlled, which is good. Yeah, I like that. People talk about you know runaway success. Well, actually, would you rather have a runaway success or a controlled success? A planned <laughs> success. <laughs> it's hard if you're looking for the short term or the long term. Yeah. You know, in the short term, with you know, with um, with the old business, if we got to a stage and actually, if I knew when to stop and pull out, and you know, we we would have done really well. Um, yeah. So yeah, but it is let's say knowing where that where that end lies. So well, hindsight's a great thing. Oh, isn't it? Just never, yeah. <laughs> if no. I could bottle hindsight, I'd be well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hello yeah. business. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So thinking about obviously this is called the ambitious lifestyle business yeah. podcast. So thinking about the lifestyle and the business side of things. Yeah. What's the difference between say now versus a year or eighteen months ago when you were in the thick of yeah. let's say Advent calendar season twenty eighteen yeah. yeah. versus today. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the hours to start off, I think, is the, the biggest difference. I was getting the warehouse at five in the morning some days to package these things up and leave at eight o'clock at night, you know. Is it now? I'm, you know, people don't want me to turn up at their house to walk the dog at five in the morning because it's, it's just unsociable, <laughs> you know. So, um, but if you look at today, for example, I've been been on the beach, I've been to Plim Bridge, you know, I go, I go to these nice places, you know, and it's, it's just completely completely different but I think the um, I remember years ago I was talking to a, a guy in the warehouse next to us and he was saying if he could do five thousand five pound a month um, he was he was quite in he did really well and he yeah. was um, a metal sprayer so oh, all yeah. he had to pay was just by the spray you know I, I said to him flipping out I've got to do eighty thousand pound a month because my margins are next to nothing where yeah. it is is seventy percent mile or what, I don't know what they were but it's just completely different I think that's with, with me now I'm basically selling my time I don't really have the overheads because obviously we work from home. I've got yeah. a van, you know, and fuel, uh, poo bags, you know. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's just completely <laughs> different. Whereas before, I'd say one year, £600,000 on post, yeah. you know, £60,000 a year on a shop, you know, with two of those, yeah. you know, it's just these costs, they, they come out of everywhere. Yeah. So less time, less stress? The stress is still there. Right. But it's nowhere near as, you know, it's what I like, you know, with, with online, it was never... It was never over. Yeah. There's always, you know, and, you know, one day we sold, I said earlier, we sold eight and a half thousand orders, even if 0.1% of that gets lost by Royal Mail, which flipping hell, they, they did. Yeah. They yeah. wouldn't actually, you know, <laughs> they cost us a lot of money, Royal Mail. Um, you know, we, we, we had a few members of staff just employed to answer the phone and answer emails. You know, you're looking at wages for that. You know, it's just, 
it was constant, you know, constant. Yeah. And generally, with online, people never really leave a review and say, you guys are great. Oh, yeah. But flipping out, they leave a review to say, you guys are messed up. Yeah. You know, and it's, uh, we had, yeah, by the end of it, we get these, these part-time people in. We, 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 we launched a garden centre website, you know, if you had all these trellises and stuff and all these all these big ornaments, we send them out. All these breakable items, They were, they yeah. were getting broken. We sent the chimneys <laughs> out in the post. Oh, we had loads get broken, you know, it's just... Looking back now, people, why would I send a chandelier out and the post of play that you know the <laughs> terracotta? You shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, but um, I love so, it. Yeah, so, so we've gone through it. So we've had our, our business and we've had the ambition, yeah. and that's kind of grown to to a thing. Yeah. And we've kind of kind of created a, a lifestyle, and we're yeah. kind of turning around a little bit more to get that ambition back in there because the this, kind of the yeah. now is kind of growing a bit, and you want a little bit more from it. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing this now for probably eight, nine months mm-hmm. something, something like that yeah. and, you know and this year i did really enjoy you know um taking the kids to school picking them up i, I always tell people i did that I didn't, probably charlotte did the majority of it to be fair <laughs> she may watch this <laughs> you know, yeah, she really will, yeah. but yeah she generally does all that you know but i like the idea of doing it you know yeah. I, I being able to if you want to do it if you want to yeah. 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 Right. yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a little, I don't have on the school playground, a little bit clicky, you know, it's, yeah. I don't really belong, I don't think. Um, but yeah, you know, go, I go to the beach, you know, and it was nice, it was no stress, I could just sit there and watch the waves and well, I'll do a bit of walking. But it was, it was the, the, the contrast to, to doing that from looking at the, the a spreadsheet and sales forecasts and budgets every day and flipping around, I'm going to do this. It was just worlds apart, you know, it really was. Um, but then, <laughs> but then I, find, I just I just found myself switching off. You know, I, I I got all these clients on board. You know, I got up to walking twenty dogs a day or something. I speak to all these other dog walkers. You know, all the time. Are you busy? No, I'm not busy. No, I just need more work. <laughs> but what are you doing about it? Oh, I just went for the phone to ring. Yeah. But I, I word was, of mouth will take care of me. Word yeah. of mouth. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the point. They do. They see that. Though. Um, you know, and I I was launching all these real high intensity. Uh, Facebook campaigns, you know, yep. we did really well off it, you know, I, I just rock up there, say the right things, I've got a shirt on, you know, and going yep. to the sales, yep. like, what dog walker turns up with a shirt on, actually you're a pretty good one, yeah. you know, that, that is just creating that thing, you know, put a logo on, you're just doing things right, you know, it's um, a bigger thing for me is accountability, you know, I do a good job, I want everyone to see that, so yep. I, I make sure I'm accountable. But yeah, no, we, we, we grew really quickly, we got to sort of 20 dogs, and then I just found myself plateau out, and mm. I just sat there and thought, flipping out, this is going to be me for the next 30 years. Because I'm not going to do anything else now. I can't yeah. do any more. I've got my van and I've got the dogs and, and that's it. And I just found myself getting up, you know, going out for a walk, coming back. I just found myself Great just in, day. in just absolute, just zonko mode, mm. you know, just not thinking. I, mean, I don't have to speak to anyone. I didn't, well, I didn't speak to anyone because I was out yeah. with my dogs all day. You know, I just thought, flipping out, I'm just, it's a bit wasted. Yeah. You know, I had created something before in the previous business. You know, and it, I just sort of thought in a little way, you know, I should be doing something again. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, we're on the up again now. Yeah. So you've but got some plans in the fire, haven't you? Yeah, but it's but it's, it's controlled, though. It's a yes. lot more controlled. You know, we're not rushing into it. Um, and the key to it is, I think, you know, we talk about the ambitious lifestyle. I still want that. Yeah. But I still like that word graft and yeah. hustle. I know you don't like oh. the, you don't like these. <laughs> I words. shiver down my spine there. <laughs> yeah, you know, you love that sale. You love the, you love that buzz. Yeah, it's like yes, I know, it's things the, and they bought into me, and actually, it's something very really satisfying about going over to a to a client and like I spoke about earlier about finding what their problem is and, yeah. and solving it. And actually, yes, sales come into it. You know, is in that's all sales. Is, is, now, I, I upsell, you know, and I, I do very well just from that, just yeah. by. So you customers, you know, what, what I don't like, and someone told me this years ago, is actually, I used to tell all our shop staff that, you know, you shouldn't be scared of, of saying, you know, I don't know I could that up, I was going to do something. Um, but by saying, you know, this, do you want to upsell? Do you want to, you've bought this candle, do you want to buy this lid to put on it? You know, what's to worry about? Because yeah. these lids, are the, you're doing the customer favour. Yeah. These lids are fantastic. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, rather than buying the crappy product from over there, we'll buy this one because this is actually going to suit you. You're doing them a favour, so why wouldn't you upsell? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's truly it's being that thing. customer's trusted advisor, yeah. isn't it? Saying, actually, yeah. I've got your best interests at heart. Now, that may yeah. mean I'm going to tell you to spend more money with me, yeah, or it may mean I'm going to tell you to spend less money, or it yeah. may mean I'm going to send you to my competitor, yeah. but I am going to do what's best for you, yeah, yeah. my customer. Yeah. And when you do that, the customer fully respects that actually this guy really has got my best interests at heart. Mm. And yeah, I probably would be better off on the 90 quid 
service rather than the 50 quid service. Yeah, yeah. And the powerful things happen, I yeah. think, when you do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm really honest with all our customers. Have. I can't do something like I tell them, but I, I always come up with a different option or solution, you know, but that's, that's the thing. Just be honest with people, you know, probably get their trust. You know, I mean, we, we've just bought these these chewable treats. It's a brilliant product. You know, I sell it because yeah. actually you know, I'm doing the, the dogs a favour. I'm in the industry of looking after them during the day. Yeah. Well, let's look after them in the evening and give them something to do there as well. And yeah. it's, it's the same across all industries. You know, you shouldn't you shouldn't be worried about selling or upselling because you should, your product should be great. If it's yeah. not, we'll, we'll get one that is you know improving. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so yeah. Good. Well, and Chris, it's been fantastic to have you on the podcast. Just before we kind of go, um, obviously the doors are open to the One Percent Club. Uh, now it's March. Um, what have you got from the One Percent Club? How's it helped you? Do you think? So I've been in the One Percent Club for I don't know a year and a half, two years, maybe. It's it's getting on to that, yeah, yeah. I mean, you certainly helped me make the decision to sort of obviously um, offload the the sort of previous. I probably put that a little bit wrong there. Um, pivot pivot yeah <laughs> so you think about you know what I want you know mm. and initially I think in um, Plymouth exact, you, you go to all these networking meetings everyone's on about grow and build and create a big company and make all this money and, about and, and it seems really good not yeah. about you and what yeah, you it seems really good but actually yeah. is that ultimately what you want you know and I think I think you know this this idea of this ambitious lifestyle well actually you can be ambitious you can have a good company but actually Get a bit of you time in there as well. It's, yeah. it's, it's quite a pretty prospect. It took me, it took me maybe a year of being the one percent club actually getting <laughs> grips with it. I used to go along to the, quite often and come up with these new campaigns and schemes of yeah, yeah. how to expand and improve. But I never really thought about me. I think it's made me do that a little bit more. Um, but you know, it's great. You know, we, we chat to other people in, in similar ideas. You know, if, if these guys can't come up with a solution, there's, there's generally I think how many people, fifty people. In, yeah, uh, exactly. Like that. That, yeah. There's fifty other people who, who who do share ideas. You know, every now and then I'll come up with something in the end, and I'll just go, duh, 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 duh. you know, what, what do you guys think? Yeah. You know, they either go, yeah, Chris, that's good, that's bad. This is a different option. Have you thought about this? It's good just to bounce ideas off. I think that's where I've got quite a bit from it, I and mean, I don't use it, you know, all the time, but it's there when I do need it. You know, a lot of people are really, really active in there. You know, and, and you know they get an awful lot from it, which is good. I think. I think that's the best way to use it is to be active and mm. to engage when you've got a problem, just just, just share it and actually you, they could help you get a solution for it. Yeah, it's that, I mean, we always say it's like a virtual board of directors. Mm. It's like, you know, we, at the end of the day, we don't have a vested interest in your company, yeah. but we do have a definite, genuine interest in your success. And yeah. whatever that means for you, you know, for you, that may be do, uh, developing the lifestyle that you mm. need and we'll focus on that or for someone else, it could be, you need to scale up or you need to sack half your staff and shut yeah. down this operation. Yeah. But you're going to decide what you want. Yeah. You're going to do the work. We're just here to help you. Mm. And we are that sounding board. And as, as you said, if myself and Jason are not able to help you because we haven't had the particular experience that you need help with, or mm. you've not, you know, don't know a particular platform, there's normally someone else in the group. There's all sorts of different walks of life though, isn't there? You yeah. Know, you look at, um, you know, some of the guys with big sort of internet companies who've got connections in the Philippines, they do all the outsourced and the marketing. You've got, you know, other people in warehousing, you've got accountants, you, you know, you've got all, all the time. You do, yeah. Like, and certainly if you have an accountant there, he's happy to give you a bit of free advice if you, you know, ask him the right way. It's, it's pretty good. So, yeah, I mean, so if uh, there's, sorry, I'm just going to move on because I know the time is, is coming to the end of this podcast, which is, which is brilliant. But, uh, if there's an ambitious lifestyle business that's in Plymouth that are busy doing the do and haven't got time to walk the dogs and want to get hold of Harris Hounds and yourself, what's the best way of doing that? So obviously the company's called Harris Hounds. Um, look us up on Facebook. We're really, really active on Facebook. Um, we're posting sort of daily. You know, give us a shout. We can we can pop on over and have a chat about it, see how we can assist you. Um, look us up on Facebook, you know, have a look at our website as well, www.harrishounds.com. Email, phone, you know, there's a whole different array of things. Failing that, give us a shout out. You know, come over to my house and that we'll have a cup of tea and have a chat about it. So awesome. Yeah. And I think that just before we do close this, I think John's got another message from our sponsors. Message from our sponsors. <laughs> Today's show was brought to you by the letters OPCC, which stands for One Percent Club. So yeah, doors are open. As we said, guys, uh, as long as you are listening to this in March, if you're listening to it in April because you're late to the podcast, very sorry. They're going to be closed again until September. But yeah, doors are open at the moment. Uh, head over to the website bigidea.co.uk. Uh, you can find links to join the One Percent Club there. You can also find a video of this podcast, full transcript, uh, every podcast we've ever done, 
And uh, you can also get a free weekly Big Idea from me every Wednesday lunchtime, all on the website, bigidea.co.uk. How was that? That was that was all right for a- That was brilliant from our sponsors. You must go back. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us this, uh, this month. Or whenever you're listening to it. Thank oh, you for joining us. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Cheers, Chris. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. So there we are, another episode in the can. Um, how was it for you? Please let us know. Um, how do you listen to these podcasts? Um, please leave a review on that platform. Let us know what we can do better, what you like, what you don't like, and how we can improve to make this show even better for you. We'll see you next time. <laughs>